we're back from the holidays. And uh, notice I'm using my cinematography style here, putting it at an angle. So I went on YouTube and said, how do you make a better shot from that? <laughs> okay, anyway, some, some stuff that I want to talk about. Uh, 2012 is just around the corner. Um, we are in the process of doing a lot of stuff. So uh, let, let me break it down, then we'll talk about some Wing Chun stuff related, related here. First of all, 2012, if you go to our website, Windy City Wing Chun, uh, it's got a whole new look and uh, there's a lot to it, okay? Check it out if you want. Uh, a lot of good reading materials and articles in there. Second thing, Facebook. If you haven't joined us yet, join us on Facebook because starting in 2012, I will have at least two videos every month exclusive only on Facebook that you won't see on YouTube. And that, that'll be more on tip, quick tips on certain things that you're training in Wing Chun. So if you haven't joined us yet on Facebook, then definitely do so. In, uh, and also remember, Facebook, uh, Facebook. I update new articles, uh, talk about Wing Chun, and discuss it more in detail than I do on YouTube. YouTube, I'm just talking to people, you know, on my iPad and on my toilet or something. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, yeah. So and, and anyway, as far as video wise, yeah, we are definitely going to be pumping out more videos um, in 2012 on a more consistent basis. Uh, hopefully, if we do it right, we'll have. Uh, uh, at least four videos every month that we'll do in addition to whatever crap Ken comes up with. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We're I'm just full of it. Uh, it's, it's festive, festive. Okay, anyway, let's talk about some Wing Chun stuff. Um, this this, this, this uh, episode, uh, not related to any of the, you know, the beginning episodes that we had, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, don't be a boxer when you're doing sticky hands. And what the hell does that mean? Don't be a boxer. Well, what happens is a lot of times when you're doing double sticky hands, okay? So from here, right here, you can see I'm just using my hands here. But if you notice at this point here, notice how I, I actually, from here, I want to feel that opponent's center. When I feel that opponent's center at that point, I know exactly what he's doing, okay? So what you see a lot of times is an actual disengagement and you have to have the eye to see the disengagement. So for example, if I'm here, um, and right here, I, I feel, you see my adjustment here? I can actually feel Robert's center from that point. I made that little adjustment. I made that stretch here, here, and I actually feel his center from here. Now what happens, whether I do an attack or a block, is once you feel that center, people end up disengaging from that and basically losing the, the target point, okay? So like in a boxer, a boxer's here, jab, in a, hit, hit, move in and out. Hit, hit, move in and out. Once, I, once, I, once I'm in that range, I don't want to move in and out from that. So um, if I feel his center from this point, now look, if I do an attack, look what happens more commonly with the attack. If I do something as simple as punch, you can see it right here, I'll make it more, more obvious. Here, you see my adjustment here, I'm actually feeling for a center. And then look when I do my attack, watch. I leave off that point and I try to punch. That's too much. That's like if you're walking, if you're walking, your, your feet are here. You're just naturally walking. Then all of a sudden, to take the next step, you're actually lifting your one foot up so significantly higher than the other to take this next step. You don't need that. So I just need enough. If I have the stick from this point here, I just need enough to move it so I can actually hit him from that point, but still be aware of the center. Have you ever noticed when you're, don't, when you're doing sticky hands? And let me see if I can do an example of this. Robert's doing some attacks, right? Go ahead, do some attacks. Can you see how it's like, I, I feel, the, let's say I feel the center, I move away from the center, I feel the center. It doesn't have to be a natural disengagement. I can be something like, he's here. Okay, for example, he's here. He pops. And then he, if I feel the center, it, my placement is here. But what happens? I disengage to that point. There's a disengagement from here. I, I feel the center, I disengage, and then leave that point. I disengage to that point. I disengage. But if I feel, that's why if you look at it, that, that kind of blocking or that kind of attacking looks choppy. It doesn't have that smoothness because it's almost like if he's my target, I want to shoot at him. I see him for that split second and then when he moves, I close my eyes and then I got, and I got to find him again. He moves again, I close my eyes, I, I got to find him again. 
So when you disengage in that point, and, it, and literally the disengage is from the stick, not from the physical, I'm going here and disengaging. If I'm here, when he does his attack, he does his attack, I still maintain, I know where his center is from this point on. He does his next attack. See, I'm still engaged all throughout his motion here. See, there's a smoothness to it that's constantly happening because this target point hasn't changed. The reason that's so important is because if I disengage off that point and he hits, look, I disengage off that point, my target's off. I actually have to move in from that. But if, my, my, if I'm aware of his center here, I engage, look, I'm still within the range to hit every single time because I have that awareness of where the target point is every single time I move. Okay? Now the worst thing you can do, I've seen this though, I'm not saying anyone in particular is doing this, I'm just saying I've seen this, is when, you, when you're, he's doing a, a block or he's doing an attack, and then here, and then you disengage off this point like this because you're in, in, in trouble or something like that. And then you try to re-engage back in. Don't ever do that. You remember, you close the gap. Once you close the gap, stay there. You don't have to, you, you shouldn't move away from that point. That's like saying he has, he's pointing a gun at me, right? He's pointing a gun at me. I get this close to him. Now I can do anything I want with him. If I get this close to him, I move further back. <laughs> That's the same concept involved. I want to be able to, once I feel the center, I can, I, once I hear, I don't want to disengage from that point. I want it from here. I can constantly control and maneuver his point here, here, and chop, here, boom, see? Constantly engage. Engage to the point where it's smooth. See, nice, nice and smooth. I'm still within range. But if you fade in and out, like you're going in and out like that, you, you'll never have the target point in place, okay? Uh, that is not an easy concept to do. Because uh, the most common interpretation is to push in. Don't, don't push in either. See how I'm pushing in like this? Don't drive that in. If I push in, it's natural. When I push in, my body pushes in. See how my hands didn't move? I don't extend here. Just, just think, if you do a push-up, you're moving your body in and out like this. Right? You do a push-up, that's a push-up. That's, that's muscle. No matter how you want to say it, that's muscle. But look, when I move my, my, my body, when I move my hands, look how my hands move. It doesn't move like this. My, my body moves it, see? Each time, my body moves it. All right, nice and smooth, my body moves it, not my hand. So when I want to feel the center, I adjust, see how my body adjusts. He does his next attack, boom. See, my body moved. Hand moved. Hand moved. Body moved. See how smooth? See the difference between the two? All right, if you can do that, you don't need to watch any more of these videos. <laughs> but I'll, see, I'll be seeing all of you next week though. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. All right, good luck.